There's two feet for this machine that you use as standard feet. This one is the foot that come on the machine when you purchased it. This one's a new foot that's called a curve foot. As you can see by looking at the two of them together that the curve foot is much shorter in the back and it's also shorter in the front. When you use this big foot to go around curves, there's a lot of the foot pushing down on the edge of the fabric and it causes it to sometimes wrinkle and push and kind of crumple up at the corners. When you look at the back of the feet, you can see something totally different in the two. It's what we call the footprint. It's the amount of the foot that's going to be touching and pushing on the fabric as you sew. This foot's footprint, the part that actually touches the fabric, goes from right here to back here. That's almost two inches. This little foot does the same thing. You can see it's very similar. This little foot from right where this little shiny spot is right here, from right there to right here is what's pushing on the fabric. So it means that this foot really isn't much, big, much bigger at all than a regular presser foot on your sewing machine. So we're gonna use this foot. Now to get started, you'll need to prepare your fabric. You need to prepare your fabric, and this is a placemat that we've done here, and we're gonna use the curved foot to put a nice pretty edging of decorative thread all the way around the outer edge of the placemat. Now to prepare it, of course, you've got to quilt it first, and then you need to do what I call stay stitching. You put this little row of stay stitching all the way around the placemat, all the way back to the beginning. What that's going to do, it's going to hold all three layers together so that they don't scoot and move around underneath here. So you go all the way around. Now I used a red thread. You really need to use the color that matches your placemat background. We did this so that you can see what we're doing. You also need to cut out a starting point place. When you cut out the starting section right here, it needs to be the depth that you're going to cut away as you sew, and it needs to be about one and a half inches long to allow for the presser foot and the knife blade to fit up in there smoothly. This way, you don't have to run up on the edge at an angle and try to get it straight. You'll start out perfectly straight, and you will end perfectly straight. Our purpose in this demonstration is to show you how to go all the way around the placemat, come back to the beginning, and then cut off the tail and how to get off the placemat without making a little jumble of threads right there. You can see I have attached the little foot that is the curved foot and also the fabric is in here so that it's right up against the knife. See where it's cut out right here in the front? Maybe if I lift up the presser foot and show you there. And you see how it's right up into that little cutout groove? That's where you want to start. As you begin, watch the knife blade right here. Your knife blade should be cutting just to the outside edge of your basting stitch. And as you go around, it's going to put your nice, pretty, decorative thread stitch on in the back. And as it comes around, see I'm watch the knife. See I'm staying right there on that edge. As you come around the corner, this little short curve foot will let you curve around this corner a whole lot easier. So you just kind of slowly curve. Now, when you do this on a sewing machine, you have a tendency to put a hand back here and want to pull the fabric to the front. On sergers, you don't do that. On sergers, you keep both of the feeding hands of the fabric right here in the front. You feed it with both fingers like this right into the knife. Don't watch the needle back here. Watch that cutting knife right there. So we just keep going around that curve. Don't rush it, push it, or crowd it. It'll just go right around there all by itself. That's what this new short foot does. Every once in a while, you might have to stop and uh, straighten your hands out a little bit. Just come right on around. I'm gonna go across the straight area here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way around the placemat. And then I'll start again when I get back close to the beginning and I'll show you how to end this stitch. All right, now you can see that I've surged all the way around the placemat, coming back to the beginning part. The tail chain from the beginning is right here. Our object is to sew until the knife just nips off that tail chain. But see how far the knife is back here yet? So we're gonna have to stitch up until the knife cuts that apart, then stop. We go right up across this hole, right into that. Now watch, see, see the knife coming up here and see the little tail chain? You wanna go just until that knife nips it off. There you go. There's the tail chain. Now, 
this only part that we have to finish is between right where the knife cut off the tail chain and where the needles are. That hasn't been finished yet. So we need to sew to close up that opening space. But if we keep going, this knife is just gonna keep trimming off the edge of these stitches all the way. So you just keep spiraling and make your placemat smaller and smaller and smaller. So what we're gonna do, because this has already been pre-trimmed in here, is that we're gonna lower down the knife blade so it no longer functions. Now, I'm going to sew with the needles until the needle comes up in here and overlaps the stitches. So you just stitch right on up in there. You look carefully so that you come back as close as you can to the original stitching line. Overlap your stitches anywhere from about a half an inch to an inch. That will depend on the type of thread you're using. Now here's the trick on how to get off. If you just surge off like that, you're gonna end up with some extra hanging over stitches on this side. So I've discovered if I lift up my presser foot, raise up my needles, see my needle is up, and I'm gonna turn the placemat straight to the back of the machine like that. See the needle's not even on the placemat in there. If you used to look in there and you could see it, now leave the presser foot up and run the machine and you just jump right off of the edge and you'll have a perfect edge where you came across there. I've got one little piece of quilting line right there I'll have to cut out, but otherwise it's a perfect ending. Now to deal with the end of the tail, you surge out enough here that you can handle it, cut it off. Okay, now that you're finished, you can see you have a nice clean area there where you jumped off of the edge. There's no hanging over stitches or after stitches. When this is tucked around to the back, you can see it's gonna be completely gone and finished. You will not be able to tell where you began and ended the stitching. When you turn this over, what we do is that we use either a double-eyed needle or a tapestry needle and we weave this chain underneath those stitches in the back to conceal them. You can leave it in a chain or you can take this chain and unravel it. Now while I'm back here, I wanna show you something else just to remind you. See how you can see my basting stitch right there on the back? I used red thread. This is just a reminder, when you do your basting stitch, be sure to use thread that matches the color of your fabric. 